On November 26, 2022, the largest aircraft carrier ever built by the U.S. Navy approached Naval Station Norfolk after a successful NATO exercise with Allied nations. During the tour, the Gerald R. Ford-class vessel proved her worth as the most sophisticated carrier in the world. The ship conducted over 1,250 sorties and achieved an outstanding generation rate of over 160 aircraft. Impressively, this capability can be bolstered to over 270 aircraft if necessary, thanks to her innovative launch systems such as the advanced arresting gear and the electromagnetic aircraft launch system, which put less strain on the airframe and allow the vessel to launch heavier fighter aircraft and lighter drones. The Navy wants to replace the existing Nimitz-class carriers with the Gerald R. Ford class in the following decade, and is thus packing the innovative and nuclear-powered carriers with the most formidable and state-of-the-art technology in the United States arsenal, expecting them to serve past 2100, more than 80 years from now. Nimitz class. The Nimitz class aircraft carriers were commissioned in May of 1975, and its lead ship was named in honor of World War II Pacific Fleet Commander Admiral Chester W. Nimitz. The carriers displace over 100,000 long tons, have a length of over 1,092 feet, a beam of about 252 feet, and a draft of 37 feet. Since their introduction, they have been the armed forces' power projection worldwide, especially against Russia, China, and North Korea. The Nimitz-class carriers can achieve a top speed of 35 miles per hour with unlimited range thanks to their nuclear reactors, and their crews of over 5,000 personnel can go on a tour of 90 days without any resupply. The ships have participated in Operation Eagle Claw, the Gulf of Sidra incident, the First and Second Gulf Wars, and several humanitarian missions. As such, they have been upgraded to better serve in modern conflicts as the years have passed. However, the Navy designed them for a 50-year service life, and in the 2000s, the service began researching a new carrier class that could replace them and launch the CVN-21 program to upgrade them one last time. In his book, Modernizing the U.S. Aircraft Carrier Fleet, Accelerating CVN-21 Production versus Midlife Refueling, author John Frederick Shank wrote, quote, the biggest problems facing the Nimitz class are the limited electrical power generation capability and the upgrade-driven increase in ship weight and erosion of the center of gravity margin needed to maintain ship stability. The program eventually evolved into the CVN-78, giving way to Gerald R. Ford, a new class of aircraft carriers. Gerald R. Ford USS Gerald R. Ford is the first U.S. Navy aircraft carrier designed in over 40 years. She's the lead ship of the Ford class of aircraft carriers developed to replace the aging Nimitz class. The class is named after the 38th President of the United States and is equipped with 23 new technologies that enhance the ship's capabilities regarding aircraft launch, propulsion, power generation, and ordnance handling. Such features also reduce the number of crew members required to operate the vessel leading to a more efficient use of manpower. Gerald R. Ford is the first of at least four Ford-class ships the Navy plans to commission, with a second carrier, John F. Kennedy, expected to be delivered in 2024. The ship began construction in 2007 and was introduced into service in 2017. The project's cost was an impressive $37 billion, and the individual vessel cost $12 billion. Ford displaces 100,000 long tons, has a length of 1,092 feet, a beam of 256 feet, and a height of 252 feet. She has space for 25 decks, more than 85 aircraft, and carries a crew of about 2,600. The main features that distinguish the Ford from the Nimitz class are her improved advanced arresting gear for aircraft, or AAG, her electromagnetic aircraft launch system, or EMALS, the revamped RIM-162 evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, stealth capabilities, and dual-band radar. Emails and AAG The Ford-class carrier has a 33% higher SGR, or sortie generation rate, when compared to the Nimitz-class, and can reach up to 160 sorties per day and over 270 during wartime. This incredible capability comes from her new aircraft launch and recovery systems, Emails and AAG. 
Email substitutes the standard steam piston catapult employed by older aircraft carriers by using a linear induction motor with electric currents that create magnetic fields that propel aircraft along the runway and put less stress on the airframes. Furthermore, Emails is more effective, cheaper, lighter, and easier to maintain by the crew. Besides bolstering forward sortie generation rate, the system also allows the aircraft carrier to launch heavier aircraft or lighter UAVs or drones. Meanwhile, AAG bolsters Ford's air capabilities by replacing previous carrier's conventional hydraulic arresting gears. The system employs electromagnets, energy-absorbing water turbines, and an induction motor that allows more precise control when arresting aircraft. Like EMALS, the AAG system allows the ship to launch UAVs without putting too much stress on the airframe of the lighter vehicles. Sensors and Upgrades Gerald R. Ford features an integrated, electronically scanned array search and tracking radar system. In addition, her dual-band radar combines the X-band AN SPY-3 multifunction radar with the S-band volume search radar emitters in three-phased arrays. The system has no moving parts, significantly reducing maintenance, while the arrays can handle low-altitude tracking, radar illumination, and overall search and tracking under any weather conditions. The new Bechtel A1B reactor is also more effective, lighter, and easier to maintain when compared to the A4W reactor used by the Nimitz carriers. The two reactors provide 30% more power than the previous generation, allowing the Navy to future-proof the design for upcoming technological assets. U.S. Navy officials have stated that they want the Gerald R. Ford class to serve in the American fleet past 2100, and are making sure the carriers are designed to accept upgrades during the following decades. Silent Wolverine USS Gerald R. Ford, the flagship of the Gerald R. Ford Carrier Strike Group, set sail from Norfolk, Virginia on October 4, 2022, for a two-month deployment to test her carrier capabilities in preparation for her first Global Force Management deployment, which is expected to commence in early 2023. This officially marked the ship's first deployment. At sea, Gerald R. Ford and her strike group joined six NATO allies to exercise Silent Wolverine in the Eastern Atlantic Ocean. The Allied force comprised vessels from Spain, Canada, Denmark, Germany, the Netherlands, and the U.S. Navy. The Navy stated that Wolverine's objective was to test the first-in-class aircraft carrier capabilities through integrated high-end naval warfare scenarios alongside participating NATO allies. Admiral Stuart B. Munch, commander of U.S. Naval Forces Europe and Africa and Allied Joint Force Command Naples, told the press, quote, The challenges of tomorrow are upon us in the here and now. Silent Wolverine demonstrates our commitment to deepening interoperability with our allies and partners while testing the advanced, cutting-edge warfighting capabilities of the Ford-class aircraft carrier in a highly relevant operational environment. Besides Gerald R. Ford, the American Carrier Strike Group includes the Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser USS Normandy and Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers USS McFall and USS Thomas Hutner. Rear Admiral Greg Huffman, commander of Carrier Strike Group 12, concluded, quote, We are honored to be sailing alongside some of the most capable navies in the world during our first deployment as we increase our proficiencies and demonstrate the warfighting capabilities that Ford brings to the fight. New Battle Flag While operating in the Atlantic Ocean, the ship displayed her battle flag for the first time. As expected, she paid homage to the man behind the vessel's name, President Gerald R. Ford. The battle flag featured a unique blue and yellow pattern representing Ford's undergraduate years at the University of Michigan. Other symbols included a nautical compass topped with a fleur-de-lis that signifies Ford's naval service during World War II and his rank of Eagle Scout. Additionally, the battle flag complements the ship's motto of integrity at the helm, further highlighting Ford's legacy of integrity and honesty throughout his career. As Ford unveiled her flag, she steamed in formation along with German frigate FGS Hessen, Spanish Armada frigate Alvaro de Bazan, Danish frigate HDMS Peter Villamos, Dutch frigate HNLMS van Amstel, and De Zeven Provincian in the Atlantic. She traveled more than 9,275 nautical miles with the carrier strike group 
and conducted air defense, mine countermeasures, anti-submarine warfare, and amphibious exercises that tested her new capabilities. Ford's commanding officer, Captain Paul Lanzalotta, said in a statement, quote, Through integrated and combined operations, such as live and inert ordnance expenditure by Carrier Air Wing 8, anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare, and air defense, we set the stage for operating with Ford-class technologies in a deployed environment. We completed more than 1,250 sorties, expended 78.3 tons of ordnance, and completed 13 underway replenishments. We accomplished this because of what Ford-class aircraft carriers bring to the fight. Ford also made her first global port call in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and later visited Portsmouth in the United Kingdom, where the crew had some time off. According to the Navy, Ford hosted 175 foreign dignitaries, 46 NATO flag officers, and more than 60 American and international reporters. The aircraft carrier successfully returned to Naval Station Norfolk on November 26, 2022, with plenty of experience for her first global force management deployment and the future of the Navy's most innovative class. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.